All right, everybody. So it says Kyle Sullivan on the screen, but uh, that's not Kyle Sullivan. That looks like uh, someone's come to town for Christmas vacation. Cousin Eddie's here. <laughs> Mind if I use the sewer? <laughs> The you know what was full. Uh, all right, everybody, welcome to the Locked On Avalanche podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. I am your host, Chris Maselli. Joining me as always, Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, aka Cousin Eddie, Kyle <laughs> Sullivan. He is with. I mean, it's the Christmas season, so you know. And I, who was it? Somebody asked you to to uh, yeah, was come far- bearing said hat. Yeah, that was a what was it uh, Cheffy Farnsey on YouTube. I read yeah. your comments and you yes. got your wish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so go check out YouTube if you want to see Kyle and his cousin Eddie Hat. Um, and so for today, what do we got? We will be discussing the pending. Well, I want to say pending, but maybe the altitude and Comcast dispute coming to an end. Why has the NHL not? Uh, incorporated taxi squad jet. Maybe they will. And the player is not going to the Olympics. We're not going to be necessarily talking about, uh, you know, the COVID situation because of that. We're going to be talking about the Olympics as a whole. Does it pull you away from even wanting to watch the Olympics now? All of that and then some, but follow the show. First things first on social media outlets, LOP and underscore avalanche on Twitter, locked on avalanche on Instagram. Locked on Avalanche at gmail.com. You can send all your questions, comments, concerns, opinions, and follow the show's YouTube channel over on YouTube. And as always, thank you for making this your first listen of the day. Uh, so, yeah, Kyle, let's jump into the Altitude Network and Comcast dispute. They were kind of forced to, to I guess, kind of like plead their case in front of a judge It hadn't gone to trial yet, which that in and of itself is crazy to know that this was going to go in front of a jury. I mean, when you think juries, you think of like, you know, murders and, you know, (laughs) homicides and stuff like that. But this was going to be in front of of 12 angry jurors uh, eventually. It doesn't seem like we're going to get to that point. seems like things are kind of going to get resolved. We're we're hearing. But uh, if this happens... This is this is long time coming. Thank God for Avalanche fans. And it's one of those that we got to this point. I think it's because it's like getting national recognition that it's such a vocal discourse between like Comcast and Altitude that like when national media talks about the Avalanche, they always mention that a lot of Avalanche fans can't watch the game because of this. And I think it's because of that that it got to this point with a mediator and a jury and all this beautiful stuff. And I hope we get a resolution to it rather quickly. I mean, this is crazy. As long as this has gone on, you don't see this. There, there's contract disputes all the time in the world of television. Um, I just went through one. I, I get my my cable through streaming through YouTube TV. And they just had a dispute with Disney. Mm-hmm. And that will back up a little bit, maybe back up a month. They had a dispute with NBC. And they were going to uh, remove NBC channels and they were going to lower your bill like 10 bucks or something. But at the last minute, they signed a deal and, and, and the channels never went away. That that usually happens when you have mm-hmm. contract disputes it, in, in television. It usually goes up to the last minute and then a deal gets done. And this is what was happening with YouTube TV and Disney. <clears throat> and I I think everybody just kind of assumed it was going to get done. It didn't. And it was Friday night where uh, they sent an email saying we're, we have to pull 17 channels, all of the Disney channels, all of the FX channels, mm-hmm. ABC, uh, National Geographic channels, 17 channels in total. They, they were going to drop your bill $15 a month because these channels were gone. It got resolved on, I think, Sunday morning. So, which, you know, it, you were without those channels for a day and a half, which is a long time. Cause I'm saying like, it doesn't go that long. This altitude and Comcast has been going on for over two years now. Yeah. You don't see this happening. And I think it got to the point where both sides were, were it just, it, it kind of like jumped at the shark and it was just like, nope, we're dug in and now we're not moving an inch. 
And I think they lost track and lost sight of who's really hurting here when you yeah. go on for this long. And there's no if ands or about it. It's if ands or buts about it. It's clearly the fans of the Avalanche and the Denver Nuggets. Yeah, I think it was one of those things that we started talking about first. Uh, like one of the first appearances I made on the show, we were talking about altitude and mm. their disputes. And it's they've been it kind of got to a really real point once we went through a whole season where Avs fans couldn't watch their team. And it was it's not just the Avs. You you're, you're missing out on your Nuggets. You're missing out on the Rapids. Like you're missing out mm. on all of your Avalanche content. And Comcast it's it's readily available to everyone in Denver. And to see two sides firmly planted, like we had a contract dispute back home in Birmingham and they pulled like college football. It was like the first two weeks and you couldn't watch it. And they were so Ooh, loud. That's... Yeah, I know. They were so loud. <laughs> they got it. They got it resolved real quick. But like Avalanche fans are just as loud and both sides dug their heels in. And to see it go this long to this extent is kind of ridiculous. And Will we see it adjusted? Like this is loud talking for both sides because the laws involved and mm. like the judicial process, but mm. still nothing accomplished. So, well, to, to compare it again to the the YouTube Disney thing, the 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 big thing that you know these these networks don't want to have happen are rates go up for mm. the consumer, and at least for for YouTube. So here's the interesting thing, I signed up for the free uh, uh, Hulu TV or Hulu Live, mm -hmm. I think it's called, has a, a seven-day free trial. So I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll just sign up for that. I'm guessing they're going to get this done within seven days. And then if they don't, I'll switch over to Hulu. And whenever it's done, I'll go back to YouTube TV because I really do like YouTube TV a lot better than mm -hmm. Hulu. Yeah, they got it done. But when I was signing up for the, the free seven-day trial for Hulu, which is the same price as YouTube TV, which is $65 a month. On my signing up, it said December 21st, which is the day we are recording this episode, their price is going up to 70 bucks a month. And I was like, uh, and then I told my wife, I'm like, hey, by the way, this is happening with, with Hulu. Uh, Hulu was going to, did I say YouTube was going up 70, 70, mm -hmm. 70 bucks? Or, okay, did I, I didn't mean, I meant Hulu is going up to 70 bucks a month. I don't know if I if I said YouTube, I, I said that wrong. <laughs> when I was signing up for Hulu, they said, here's your seven days. Just so you know, on December 21st, we're going up to 70 bucks a month. So I told my wife, I was like, hey, uh, you know, if we stay with Hulu, we're going to be paying 70 bucks a month. And just so you know, whenever the, the YouTube thing gets done, that likely means it's that's YouTube's going up to 70 bucks a month as well. But that did not happen. No, YouTube, YouTube uh, in their email said we were able to negotiate a deal with Disney and your rate is not going up. So that's clearly what they were wanting to have happen. And again, bringing this back to the Comcast altitude dispute, you know, altitude wants to give their product, but they don't want prices to go up. And Comcast was saying, you know, we want your stuff, but we're, I don't know how much they're going to have to raise it. But that's the business that they're in is obviously making money and, and, and raising prices. I don't know. We're not at the end game yet. And I don't know if prices are going to go up. But I'm, I wonder if Avalanche fans are saying at this point, if you're going to raise our, our bill a couple bucks a month, we will gladly pay that so we can watch our teams. The thing about this whole deal that nobody <laughs> really thought about and I think it's going to be hard to come back from. This is two seasons where you taught every Avalanche fan in the Denver market how valuable piracy is. Because, You're not kidding, man. Because if you go on any Avalanche fan anything, um, about 15 minutes before the game, you're seeing websites shared on how you're going to watch your Avalanche game. And guess yep. what? That's $0, maybe $10 if you get the premium streams. And it doesn't matter what your rate is. They have an option now you made your market find an option to watch their game. And yes. I hope you feel good about your stance because I think you just lost a huge amount of your fan base that would pay for your avalanche and found a much cheaper option. Or you turned some avalanche fan into criminals <laughs> by, by doing that. <laughs> so, yeah. 
All right. Well, uh, hopefully it gets done, gets done soon and uh, we can just move on from this and, and, you know, fans in the Denver area can start watching the avalanche again. Cause that's what we all want. But mm-hmm. even if it gets done, we might have to wait a little while longer <laughs> to watch them. Why? Because we are on a, uh, a, a COVID break except for the Tampa Bay lightning and Vegas golden Knights, which I have no idea why that game didn't get postponed, but we will discuss the avalanche specifically. That's two uh, of Gary and- Bettman's favorite teams. That's why. There you go. So, but first we're, we're going to, well, we're going to discuss the avalanche and kind of what we did last time when they went on a pause and who can benefit from stuff like that. So that's after we hear from primal origin oils and you got a beard, then you got to get primal. That's right. If you got a beard, get primal. <clears throat> if you or someone you care about has a beard, it needs to get primal. Maybe you're that guy who has never considered the benefits of treating your beard with a product, but primal origin oils will stop the itch and make your beard look healthy and groomed. The products are free from harmful, harmful synthetic ingredients and with low with a low impact on our planet. Primal origin oils makes balms, oils, and whipped butters that are renowned as the best feel and beard products available. All products are fair trade certified and handcrafted in the USA. And the combo kits make a great holiday gift. If you're shopping for yourself or somebody else, you will be glad that you did. And we know that every company claims to have the best, but Primal Origin Oils challenges you to compare their ingredients with others in the beard care product industry and let us know what you think is best. Uh, I've used this stuff. I have, to, And I use a lot of beard care stuff. Trust me. It's excellent, excellent product. So we promise that you will fe- you will see and feel the difference. And remember that the promo code locked on gets you 20% off at primaloriginoils.com. Once again, promo code is locked on for 20% off at primaloriginoils.com. Also brought to you by Built Bar. And we are at the holiday season. Grab the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar or even better than a candy bar. That's Built Bar. And we say all the time how You know, the new year is here and everybody wants to get healthy. Built Bar is a great way to help you down that road of a healthier new year. And you get the best of both worlds with Built Bar. Delicious and healthy. They are amazingly low in calories and sugar, net carbs and fat, yet high in protein. And you have tons of flavors to choose from. You hear Kyle and I talking about our favorite flavors all the time. And they are releasing new flavors all the time as well. You have a uh, a chocolate peppermint, I think right now for the holiday season. So I think that is still available, but the ones like that sell out relatively quickly. So uh, definitely go check it. If they have it, order them because they're delicious. And you could, when you're there at builtbar.com, use the promo code locked 15 to get 15% off of your order. Once again, built.com promo code is locked one five for 15% off of your order. All right, sir. Um, so yeah, abs on a break. We're not going to discuss the whole COVID thing, but we are going to discuss a couple things. One specifically with the avalanche. When the abs went on pause last year, twice, uh, we had discussed who can this benefit? You have a, a chance to really sit back, stand back, you know, take a, a broad view of how you are individually playing how the team is playing as a whole, where you fit in with that team, what's going right, what's going wrong. Anybody that's jumping out at you that can utilize this as a a positive for just taking a step back from the game right now. Honestly, I, I taking a step back, I the evaluation between Nathan McKinnon and a returning Gabe Landeskog because he should be he should be coming close to returning by the time this is all said and done, right? Um, we've seen Nathan McKinnon shift into this more facilitating role, and you're going to have a team with a little bit of rust coming back, and he's gotten so used with everybody's timing, where everybody is, everybody's gotten used to him. What happens with that facilitating doesn't work? Does he resort back to the Nathan McKinnon we've all been screaming for, the shoot first, ask question later kind of guy? Is that what we're going to see? That's the dynamic I'm going to be looking at when the Avalanche do come back, how quickly it takes Nathan McKinnon to find either role A that we're used to, the Mandalorian type role, or Mm. role B where he's just facilitating and kind of quarterbacking the team. And I remember 
when we talked about this last year, uh, the couple the couple guys we were talking about then, one was JT Confer, mm-hmm. and the other was Ryan Graves, mm-hmm. and who got off to a really really rough start. And I think Graves used it to to his benefit mm-hmm. after after the break. I think that was the best thing that happened to him. And I agree with you with Nathan McKinnon. And again, like what we're sitting here, the only thing that we're really discussing in, in I guess, uh, with, with any sort of concern is his goal scoring. Mm-hmm. It's not scoring in general. It's, it's, it's specifically the goal scoring. So – what I mean, what what can he do differently? I mean, it's not like he's not getting shots on net. Uh, like that's all there. The past, the, the the last few games that he played, I mean, we had talked about it. He was almost like too selfish and in, in almost looking for the pass first. Mm-hmm. And we had we had said how he has really kind of changed his game the past few games to kind of settle himself down not just be a bull in a china shop. And now I think he can say, like, okay, I, I, I'm okay playing that way, but I still have to score. That is my bread and butter is scoring goals for this team. This team is doing well without me scoring goals. Just imagine what we could do if I could write that ship. And you kind of see this new role of Nathan McKinnon as kind of an overcompensation where he, he can kind of not have to worry about scoring, so he overthinks the passing now. Um, he just shifts his mentality to a different game. And when it came to the Avalanche coming back from their two COVID, COVID shutdowns last year, they came off those breaks rather slow. And the reason that it stands out to me with his passing now, if you have a team that's kind of rusty and slow and everything takes a period or two for everybody to figure out where everybody is, would Nathan McKinnon just kind of snap and be like, okay, this isn't working anymore because that's how it was with the shooting. He would skate into traffic. He would make a bad handle on the puck. And he's like, okay, this isn't working. Let me pass. Does he break back out of this and go back into the shooting mode? Right. Definitely be interested to see how he returns uh, again. And just the goal scoring and everything. Like, he's still playing very, very well. He's he's still facilitating. I want to see what Logan O'Connor does when he comes back. Mm. He's right at that point. Like, he's been playing great all year long. He has been a pleasant surprise Maybe not a surprise for anybody, for some people. Um, but he is definitely overachieving in a good way. But his last four games, he hasn't scored anything. No goals, no assists. And that's coming off that two-goal game against the Rangers. So since then, he has anything. Okay, fine. Four games you haven't scored. Th- you know, th- these are This is what we talk about with Andre Burakovsky all the time. Minimize when you go into a scoring funk – Minimize that. When can, well, the earlier you can break out of that, the better. We talk about that with Burakovsky constantly, and he he ended Burakovsky ended this you know, uh, well going into this COVID pause on a hot streak. So he might be another one that you have to watch coming out of it. Can he continue that? But I think Logan O'Connor is a guy to watch to say, okay, you know, I didn't score in four games. I think he played poorly, but you know, he's risen up to top line minutes. And now he, he, he's he got four games in a row where he hasn't scored. Okay, what? why? Why is that? So I think he can use it as a, a positive to really focus in on those four games specifically and come out and say, all right, what was not working for those four games compared to before that when I was, uh, you know, a madman all over the ice. Yeah, and Logan, I mean, we had that crossover with John from Locked On Rangers, and he was asking, who is this guy? Yeah, Um, because, I mean, he was with that level. I mean, he's sitting at five goals on the year so far and 12 points. But without with these last four games, did he peak too early? Is that the best you're going to see out of him this year? You don't think so with that talent that he has? Like, he's really, really good. Like, sitting on five goals, he sprinkled three early in the season. But he's he's really starting to pick up. Does he pick right back up? Um, Like, in that Ranger performance level coming off this break? Because, again... The Avalanche aren't known for coming out of a break strong. Like we started the season slow. We're going to, you also have to worry about that coming out of a break. And this isn't yeah. a terribly long break if everything goes according to plan. But still, he's one of those that you really want to see hit the ice running. Definitely. 
So uh, that's kind of someone that we're, we're, we're focusing on. I think you always throw Tyson Jost into this conversation. Yep. <laughs> you know, he's always somebody that you're, you're wanting to take that next step. And last year had a good season this mm-hmm. year, kind of falling back into that Tyson Jost mode. So maybe, you know, this is a, a, a little break that he can utilize in some way. I don't know. We'll see. Go ahead. And I think I think the player that you everyone wants to get your barometer for how this Avalanche team is going to look is Devin Taze, how he comes yeah. out of the gate. Um, he's sitting with a plus minus a nineteen, like yeah, he's, he's he's a rock solid yeah. player. If he gets back to normal, I think that's a little bit of a safety blanket for the rest of the team. Definitely. All right. Well, we didn't really get to talk about Taxi Squad, so maybe we can do that for tomorrow. But um, okay. why the NHL is not doing them? I don't know. We'll discuss. And maybe because we didn't talk about it, they'll incorporate it tomorrow. They'll say like, oh, yeah, we listened to these two idiots on uh, some podcast. And I think we're going to incorporate taxi squads now. No, that likely will not happen anyway. uh, But we will talk about the Olympics. Uh, But first, we're going to hear from BetOnline and BetOnline.ag. It's got you covered this holiday season with more prop bets, odds and lines than ever before. As the football season continues its march towards the playoffs and We have college bowl season upon us. I love uh, not only college bowl season, but the names of college bowls. They seem to change every year. Doesn't Jimmy Kimmel have his own bowl this year? I wouldn't wouldn't be surprised. I think he does. Is Jimmy Kimmel something, something bowl? But yeah, I, I just get a kick out of that as much as the game. But you can bet on all of that stuff over at betonline.ag. It remains your number one spot for all the sports action this season. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up. And when you do, you will receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use that promo code locked on to receive your bonus from basketball, football, the NHL, boxing, and UFC right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. So don't wait to take advantage of all the new amazing offers available betonline.ag it's where the game starts so we know that the nhl players are not going to the olympics did, did they make an official statement yet as if are uh, recording this i don't think they did i think yeah. i think word is leaked that they're not going i don't think as as our recording of this the nhl has released an, an official statement but it, it's likely not going to happen um they they do have some time they had till january 10th but i think it's going to happen uh, long before that, where they make the official statement. Okay. We're not going to get into, uh, you know, the, the whole COVID situation and that being the, the main reason why they're not going. Clearly it is kind of on a, a, an Olympic level. Um, I mean, yeah, it, it's disappointing because we we're finally going to get NHL players back in the Olympics. That is a draw. That <laughs> is the, a big draw for the Olympics. And it is a big draw for the NHL. The NHL always gets an uptick in viewership, and there's a lot more interest in the sport, uh, like following the Olympics when it's over. And and you always see like an increase in viewership. And that's not going to happen. now. That's the downside to this. So we'll speak on that, and then we'll get into the Olympics. Yeah, that's definitely, it's one of the things that you're going to miss out on. And it was one of the things that we talked about with the opportunity for the uh, NHL players to get the chance to play in the Olympics. It's one of the things that kids growing up overseas that don't really have the exposure to the NHL that we do. They get to see those games locally. And those, I mean, it's the same reason I fell in love with the Avalanche. You see like Wa Sackick Forsberg on television. You fall in love with them because they look like rock stars. Same situation when you see NHL players in the Olympics compared to what you have been seeing in the Olympics, it's night and day. And these guys look like rock stars and inspires a new generation of international talent that has severely been lacking in the NHL. And like, you're going to miss out on it this year and it loses a little bit of luster and what we could have gained in fans and new talent. So yeah, that's, that's definitely a big um, disappointment. seems like Sidney Crosby is the one that everybody's kind of focusing on in right now on, you know, because you know, four years from now, mm-hmm. if everything is okay four years from now and then they do go back, he's not going to be the same player. Uh, he's 34 right now, right? That, that 38. So. Clearly, he's not going to be the same player. Could he still be on a Canadian team and be on a, a third or fourth line? Like, you know, sure, he could be. But 
I think they were all looking forward to this super team that they were going to have mm-hmm. um, and him being a big part of it. Um, having said that, though, like I'm a huge Olympic fan. Mm-hmm. I love the Olympics summer and winter. When somebody asked me, like, what's your favorite? I tend to say the winter more because of obviously the hockey part of it. But somebody told me something once. They were like, yeah, summer is fun, but summer doesn't have a sport that is focused in on. And yeah. I'm racking my brain and I'm like, like what 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 is the what is the 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 marquee event for the Summer Olympics? I'm like, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm like, you know what, man? That that's a really good point. Like collectively, they're great, but yeah. there's not one event that people tune in for. And and the Winter Olympics probably have two with curling. The, absolutely curling. I mean, it's the greatest sport ever created. Uh, so three, there you go. Curling, <laughs> hockey, and then the figure skating, like the, the ice skate, like that oh, yeah. gets massive ratings. Yeah. But you, you can f- like people look forward to the Olympics for hockey yes. specifically. And I'm, I'm like, wow, man, I never really thought about that with the summer Olympics because hockey is such an integral part of the winter Olympics. And now that the NHL players are not going and we were teased that they were, does that pull your interest in the Olympics away or do you still have as much interest, uh, but maybe just not as heightened because the NHL guys aren't going to be there? Well, the Winter Olympics, like you said, they have the advantage of being the more enjoyable of the two. Um, Like the Summer Olympics, they have to add like basketball, golf, and skateboarding just to kind of be interesting. Like these are all relatively like new hype. Um, Don't you find it interesting that basketball is not like – as big in the summer i don't think it is i Maybe think it's because the united states just bowls over everybody but it's like i think every time i hear summer i always think swimming and i'm just like okay yeah but there's 50 different events in swimming it gets boring after a little while and there's so yeah. many things you can watch in the winter and like and that was one of the fun things you get to do when it comes to like hockey in the olympics you get to watch your skiing then you get to watch your yeah. like cross country and then you're like oh yeah USA plays Germany. Let's tune into that. And then it's just that whole wide range. Like hockey's hockey. You know me. I will watch whatever. If it's sticks and pucks and nets, nets, I'm going to be watching it. But it's going to be a disappointment that the NHL is not there. And it was one of the big things that everybody was looking forward to. So maybe I'll be watching more of the other sports that are on at the same time in the Olympics. You know what? You know what I think we need to to uh, try to achieve here? Maybe during this pause or sometime before the Olympics, or even after the Olympics, whenever. I think a, 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 uh, a goal that we need to have <clears throat> is have one of those ski jumpers on our show Ooh. And, and ask them, like, how, I, I've always wanted to ask a ski jumper, how did you come to this sport? <laughs> how, at what point in your life did you say, I'm going to launch myself off? I'm going to go straight down like a rocket, like a missile, and launch myself off of this thing hundreds of feet in the air. And <laughs> if I crash, it's not going to be good. I want to know an answer to that. And why was it the Nintendo Wii game? <laughs> Enough. <laughs> Before that, man, Nintendo yeah. with with the power pad. Yeah. Remember the power pad? You had to lift your heels up, dude. Like I'm dating myself with that. But holy wasn't crap. that the whole thing of the wide world of sports that used to play on uh, ABC on Saturdays? Was like that guy taking that massive turn? Was that what happened? Was that? I don't know. But who came know, up with know. that first, and then is good enough to be like that's an Olympic sport? I want to know. <laughs> I want to know. Like how, what the first time you did that. I'm sure you did like a lot of short, small little like jumps first. The first time you stared down that gauntlet, you were like, yep, let's do it. That is a different mindset. I will never be able to get in. It's got to be those people that surprisingly take a hill and they're like chasing that feeling of that surprise and they just keep going and going and going and eventually end up in the Olympics. But do you die? Do you do you jump? You know how like a lot of the, the people will like jump into like those styrofoam pits and stuff yeah. like that. Like, is that what you jumped into first? Even if you did that, when you removed the styrofoam cubes, you still had to land on solid ground. I got to know. I got to get a, a Olympic ski jumper in here. If anybody knows one, please. Uh, I guess they don't have to be Olympic. I guess anybody that's just done that. Yeah. Uh, shoot me an email because 
I'll get you on and we can talk some uh, Olympic ski jumping. Why not? I mean, you're not locked on avalanche at gmail.com. We're there listening. You go. There you go. Uh, it's, it's been a fascination of mine. And every time I watch it, I'm in awe of those guys. Um, so that will do it. I mean, it's an interesting question though. What, how much will the ratings dip solely because NHL players mm-hmm. are not there? We shall see. Uh, but I know I'm still going to be watching the Olympics because they're Olympics and they're great. But I will be watching now, missing what I know was days away from happening, and that's NHL players coming back. Maybe in four years we'll get that. We were so close. So close. All right. Well, that is going to wrap it up for today. We will uh, we'll definitely get to the Taxi Squad talk tomorrow, among other things. Uh, and uh, I don't know who Kyle's going to dress up like tomorrow <laughs> in Christmas I'm, movie world. I'm still in boxes, so... <laughs> The, yeah. the options are limited. <laughs> All right. Well, he is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, a.k.a. Kyle Sullivan, a.k.a. Cousin Eddie. <laughs> I am Chris Maselli, and this is the Locked On Avalanche podcast. Thank you for making this your first listen of the day, everyone. And we'll see you guys tomorrow.